Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Evangelist August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. We want to thank you so much for tuning in on this Friday afternoon as we are coming to you live from our main headquarters here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Another beautiful, warm day out here in the New England area. And uh, we appreciate each and every one of you joining us for another Bible prophecy update. So I hope you have your Bibles open today. Hope you write down some notes, or if you're tuning in in the middle of the broadcast or late in the broadcast during this live stream, or you're watching the archive of this video, then have your Bibles out and take down some notes because I'm going to be talking about the partial rapture. Is it biblical or is the partial rapture biblical? Is the partial rapture biblical? And we're going to be talking about that on today's program. And so I'm excited about this. I hope all of you had a wonderful 4th of July. My wife and I spent the day together. And then we drove to be with our family in Fall River, Massachusetts. And uh, we got to see the fireworks. My wife and I enjoyed a nice dinner. And so we just, we just had a wonderful, wonderful time yesterday. So we did not have any live streaming show for Thursday. But it's hard to believe the weekend is here. Another week <clears throat> has just blown right by. And so, again, guys, uh, it's great to be with you. <clears throat> and I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Sometimes we're on at 1, sometimes 1.30, depending upon how late our schedule is running. But we're so grateful that you take time out of your busy schedule to join us for these live Bible prophecy updates. Hey, call a friend. They can tune in because these videos are public. My Facebook timeline is public. So they're more than welcome to uh, watch these live streaming videos. We also upload these videos to YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And so when you have an opportunity, you can follow me on the social networks. Facebook, as I said, my page is public. Look at all of our videos on YouTube. We have over 400 videos on YouTube. So check out our, our YouTube videos and then go to LinkedIn. Follow me on link. Uh, excuse me. Uh, well, actually, yeah, LinkedIn. Evangelist August Rosado on LinkedIn. And then you can go to my Twitter account. Look at our late breaking news stories on Twitter. My handle is Bible underscore prophecy or August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. Look at all my late breaking news stories. And those news stories also go to my feed on our website. Go to our website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Sign up for my newsletters while you're there. They go out every week. Go to the contact link. Give us your name and your email address. We'll put you in the system. And every week you'll receive our newsletters. And then you can navigate around the website. Go to our store. Order my books on Bible prophecy. Books that I have written. You can also order our Holy Land products. All of that is available for you. If you're a pastor of a church and you would like to have me come to your church to talk about Israel, Bible prophecy, and current events, would love to come to your church. We got some openings for late this summer, the fall. So if you're a pastor, give us a a shout out here at Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. You can do that through my Facebook Messenger or send me an email. August.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com. And then uh, give me a return phone number and I'll be more than happy to call you back, Pastor, to see if we can get together with a date. Our speaking schedule is already heating up for the summer and for the fall as well. 
And so if you're a pastor, give us a call. We'd love to come to your church and talk about these biblical truths. And if you want to come with me to Israel in March of 2020, Lord willing, now is the time to make those preparations. Come with us to the Holy Land and let me teach you Bible prophecy on location. We've got a lot of inquiries about uh, the spring trip for next year in March. If you want to go, make those preparations now. I'd love to, I'd love to have you come with us to Israel. And if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please prayerfully consider supporting us here at Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. You can do that by hitting the PayPal button at the bottom of my webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Or you can send your support through snail mail to Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 55 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 028. Six, five. Let me read you out of 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52. This is one of the great rapture passages. In addition to the other great rapture passage in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. But here in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, Paul the Apostle speaking, he says, <clears throat> Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For well, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That is a great rapture passage that we find in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. So, the title of this message is, Is the Partial Rapture Biblical? When Paul the Apostle revealed the mystery of the rapture of the church, he revealed it not to one of the most spiritual churches in Asia Minor, but to the worldliest church in Asia Minor. The church at Corinth, was rife with sin, rife with carnality. Things were so bad that Paul reported divisions within the Corinthian assembly in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. There were contentions or fightings, if you will, within the Corinthian assembly in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 in verse number 11. There were those in the Corinthian church that Paul reported to be carnal. Others were envious. They were, they were envy. <coughs> Excuse me. Others causing strife and divisions within the church. They were walking after the flesh. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 3. Paul reported men in the Corinthian assembly as being, or women for that matter, as being puffed up or arrogant. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 18. Paul said that when I come to you, Lord willing, I don't want to be associated with such arrogant individuals in the church, but I want to come in the power of God. Paul was telling the church, when I arrive, what am I going to do with you people when I get there? You know, shall, shall I use the rod on you? I mean, that, that's exactly what, what Paul was saying. You know, shall I use the rod on you? Or shall I use love? He says, whatever I use, it will be in meekness. But it's going to be tough love. He said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 21. I mean, wow. Things were so bad in the Corinthian assembly that there were reports of fornication, which was common among them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1, 
things were really bad. When they were arrogant about it. They were arrogant, boasting about their fornication in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 2. There were those in the church. They were taking each other to a secular court of law in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 and in verse number 6. Not only was their fornication taking place, but incest was taking place as well. Incest, as it was reported, a son was having uh, an affair, a relationship, a sexual relationship with his mother. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse number 1, things were bad in the Corinthian assembly. I mean, folks, things were not too well. But what really creeps me out about all this in the Corinthian church is that much of this sin is going on in the 21st century church today. The church today has just as much world in it in the day and age, the day and age in which we live. Yet, when Paul uh, gave the revelation of the rapture, he did not reveal it to the most spiritual church in Asia Minor. He could have did that maybe with the Church of Philadelphia. He didn't. Or let's say the Church of Philippi. They were a given church. He didn't. He revealed the doctrine of the rapture to the most carnal, worldly church in the region. And that was the church at Corinth. Today, we have this teaching called the partial rapture. And like all doctrines not found in Scripture, it is nothing but a theory. It's not as popular today as it was once back in the day. Yet, there are a handful in the church today who still teach a partial rapture theory those who embrace this view say only spiritual believers will go in the rapture and carnal believers though saved will be left behind and they base their argument on the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, they see the five wise virgins as the saved spiritual Christians and the five unwise virgins as the carnal, fleshly, worldly Christians. Now, I must admit, man, this has to be one of the grossest and awful hermeneutical interpretations I have ever seen in my 31 years of study in Bible prophecy. It is an allegorical interpretation to apply something, to apply something else other than the intended original meaning of Matthew 25. Matthew 25 deals with with the kingdom. Matthew 25 does not deal with the church age in which we live now. Matthew 25 deals with the kingdom. Matthew 24 deals with the tribulation. Matthew 25 deals with the kingdom. Matthew 25 does not deal with the church age, but with the kingdom age. The ten virgins are the Jews. How do I know that? <clears throat> because when you drop down to verses 32 and 34, 32 through 34, I might add, of Matthew 25, it refers to the sheep and goats. We taught about this already, folks. Who are the sheep and the goats? The sheep and goats are the Gentiles. Jesus said in verse 32, 
that all nations shall be gathered before him. The Greek word for nations is the Greek word ethnos. It refers to Gentile nations. The sheep are the saved Gentiles of the tribulation period. And the goats are the lost Gentiles of the tribulation period. And by the way, always use parallels in scripture because parallel passages give you more information. Or look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, is uh, a parallel to Matthew chapter 25, verses 32 through 34. And so we always need to look at parallels in Scripture. Because in Matthew 13, 24 through 30, that talks about the wheat and the tares, the saved and the unsaved of the tribulation period. Matthew 25, 32 to 34, is a sheep and the goats, the saved Gentiles and the lost Gentiles of the tribulation period. But the ten virgins are the Jews of the tribulation period. The wise who have oil in their lamps are the saved Jews. And the unwise with no oil in their lamps are the lost Jews of the tribulation period. Oil is always significant and applied to the Holy Spirit in the Bible. For one to try to apply Matthew 25 to the church age as a reference to Christians, spiritual and unspiritual, is simply taking the text out of context. Well, that results in a pretext. There are some serious theological holes in the partial rapture theory. My question to these guys who hold such a theory would be this. Why would God create the church on the basis of grace and faith and then divide the church on the basis of works? That makes no sense at all. There is no logic to that type of thinking at all. It, it just makes no sense to me. If carnal Christians who are saved but ashamed to do the Lord's work are left behind at the rapture, then pray tell. Why did John the Apostle say in 1 John 2, 28, and now little children abide in him? that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. That verse implies that some Christians taken in the rapture are going to suffer shame. They go up in a shameful state. They're saved, but they go up in a shameful state. We see another case in point. We see the same thing mentioned by Paul the Apostle in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. Now, I'd like to read that to you in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. Please listen or read this very carefully. Jesus, the Messiah, is the only foundation. Paul said this, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work Abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. This is not loss of salvation. This is loss of reward. But he himself 
shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Obviously, this is a reference to the Bema or the judgment seat of Christ. At the Bema, Christians will be rewarded, or some Christians will be rewarded by gold, silver, precious stones. Those things can abide in the fire, and by doing so, they're purified. But you have other Christians that will receive no reward in heaven. And their works, if you even want to call it that, are wood, hay, and stubble. Those are combustible. They're burned up in the fire because motives weren't right. Flesh was done in doing the work of the Lord. Greed probably got in there. So those motives weren't pure. They were nothing more than wood, hay, and stubble. They're combustible. They go up in the flames. So at the judgment seat of Christ, you have those believers who receive reward and others no rewards whatsoever. Obviously, this is the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10, Romans 14.10, Romans 14.12, and right there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 through 15. If any man's work shall suffer loss, that can be due to shame or doing the Lord's work with improper motives. They suffer loss. It's not loss of salvation because they're in heaven. So obviously, it's loss of reward. Now, why aren't those Christians left behind at the rapture? Why aren't they on the earth? And only those spiritual Christians just receiving gold, silver, and precious stones without Paul mentioning wood, hay, and stubble. Because all born-again believers are up there, but they went up in a state of different levels of spiritual maturity. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5 says, Every born-again blood washed believer is a member of the body of Messiah, the body of Christ. Now, should only certain spiritual Christians who meet a certain standard of spirituality be taken up in the rapture? Absolutely not. Because if that was true, then the body of Christ would be dismembered and the body of Christ would be disfigured. The partial rapture view, by definition, denies the teaching of the unity of the body of Christ, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Folks, at the rapture, all true born-again believers will be taken, despite differences in mat a spiritual maturity levels. If you're saved, you're going to be taken at the rapture. Don't get me wrong. We must all strive for spiritual maturity. That's exactly what the writer of Hebrews says. Stop staying at the level that you are right now and move on to maturity, to spiritual maturity. We must be biblicist. That's imperative in the day and age in which we live. We must grow in faith and walk with the Lord in intimacy. I know that all of us are not perfect in doing that, especially me. We must be soul winners in the last days in which we live. We cannot remain babes in Christ for the rest of our spiritual lives here on earth. We must move on. We must grow, according to 1 Peter 2, 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Hebrews 5, 13 says that we must mature. Stop drinking the milk. You can't feed a baby milk forever. That baby's going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. So by the time the, the, the young baby reaches five, are you still going to be giving him milk? 
No, they're going to be eating some solid stuff. We can't live on milk forever. We must start eating on solid substance. Meat. And when I say meat, we must be feasting on the meat of God's word. Don't let that word theology scare the daylights out of you. We don't get our theology from those guys that you see on Christian TV. Or we don't get our theology from guys we listen to on Christian radio. We must get our theology when we read the Bible. When we read God's holy word. When we study God's holy word. Theology simply means the study of God. Christology, the study of Christ. Pneumatology, the study of the Holy Spirit. Ecclesiology, the study of the church. Um, eschatology, that's what I do. Eschatology, the study of last things or Bible prophecy. Demonology, the study of demons. Satanology, the study of Satan. How do we get all those ologies from God's word bibliology the study of the Bible and it's imperative that we do that when we read God's word every single day and ladies and gentlemen it's important that we do so I want to read to you uh, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 13, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful. If you are, if you've been saved four or five years, you need to start getting off the milk, man. If you keep using the milk, you're going to be unskillful in God's word. How do I know that? Hebrews 5, 13, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. You need to move on because verse 14 says this, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, spiritual mature, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You need to train your mind to discern both good and evil. That's what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. How do we do that? you got to train your mind. you got to train yourself. You do that when you study God's word. Get off the milk, man. Get off the milk. Start eating the meat. Move on to spiritual maturity. My dear friend, Dr. Todd Baker has a Friday night congregation, Shalom Shalom congregation. And Todd teaches in somewhat of a seminarian fashion. He has a doctorate. He's a doctor of theology. He has a PhD. He teaches on a seminarian theological level. And most people would walk away from that, which they've already done, and approached him and said, I can't stay here no more. You go over my head. I can't understand half of what you're saying. I'm going to go somewhere else. Reason why? They don't understand half of what he's saying is because even though they've been saved 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years or more, they're still babes. They're still sucking on the baby bottle when they should have been chewing on the meat a long time ago. And based on that, they're unskillful in the word, which is the reason why they look at someone like Dr. Baker and say, I can't stay here anymore. We need to move on 
to spiritual maturity. Unfortunately, there are Christians there, they're saved, but they haven't moved on. They're still babes in Christ. I can understand you, even if you've been a Christian a year, you're still going to be on that milk. I understand that. But man, after a year or so, you need to move on. You need to start eating that meat. You need to start studying these theological issues so that you would be able to confront and, and tear apart a false doctrine like the partial rapture theory. We need to be in God's word every single day. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we, and I, I use this in churches all the time, and man, I scare the daylights out of pastors when I say, I'm going to use a filthy, dirty, derogatory word right now, and I'm going to shock all of you. Pastor's looking at me sitting down there. His foot's tapping. He doesn't know what to expect. I said, if you have little kids in the, in the uh, congregation, you might want to block their ears. And I can actually see mothers putting their hands on their ears, on their kids' ears. And people are like on standby. It's like, you know, you can see the eyes are wide open. I'm like, I'm going to use a dirty word right now. Filthy word. You ready? Here it is. Study. Then I'll duck behind the pulpit. And the whole congregation burst out in laughter. And you can see the pastor. He's like a, you know, a sigh of relief. It's a dirty word in the church today. Study. Because we never study God's word. And when we don't do that, then we don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't live on milk forever. It's time to eat meat. The meat of the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the rapture of the church is so very near. And when the rapture happens, all true born-again believers will go no matter what level of spiritual maturity you are at. I encourage you to move on in spiritual maturity. Don't stay where you are. But when we're raptured, everybody who is saved, no matter what level of maturity you are, will go up. That's the reason why Paul revealed the doctrine of the rapture to the most carnal church in Asia Minor, the church at Corinth. He could have revealed it to any other spiritual church. He didn't. He revealed it to the church at Corinth, a very worldly church. Praise the Lord, the church got their act together, which is why Paul wrote a second epistle to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians, to encourage them. We need to encourage each other. In the day and age, ladies and gentlemen, in which we live. Uh, I don't know why no one's names appearing in my screen. Again, it could be Facebook. I don't know. The, the, their live stream has really been off lately. It really has. So I'm hoping that this live streaming is broadcasting and getting through to everybody. And so that's all that we have today, guys. But listen, again, I want to thank you for joining us. And I hope that this lesson was a blessing to you. If you're just... Tuning in late or whatever, we're going to upload this to my timeline as well as to YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn so that you can watch it in its entirety. Use it for Sunday school. Folks, we need to arm ourselves today with God's Word because there's so much false doctrine out there today, and it's unfortunate Christians are falling for this false doctrine. I mean, man, there's more false doctrine in the church today than there is among the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons. That should not be the case. The reason why there's so much false doctrine in the church today is because we're not rightly dividing the word of truth. We're not applying a proper biblical hermeneutic. We're not letting the Bible interpret the Bible. We're allegorizing, spiritualizing. It's become a mess. It's just become a mess. We must apply the science of biblical interpretation, hermeneutics. Who's speaking? Who's he speaking to? What is he speaking about? Looking at the scriptures for their 
uh, historical, grammatical, contextual, and literal interpretation. If, the, if you're going to allegorize, it's because the Bible's telling you to do so. And if the Bible doesn't tell you to do so, don't spiritualize. Don't up, try to apply something else to the text than what the text originally intends. And if we can get that down, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have the right hermeneutic. You're going to have the right Bible doctrine. So, again, visit my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Sign up for my newsletters by going to the contact form. Go to our bookstore, order my books that I have written on Bible prophecy. We just switched publishers from Zulon Publishing to Amazon Publishing for my book, The Serpent, the Seed, and the Second Coming. I don't really carry that book with me because, well, of, of Zulon. And I, I don't do business with them anymore. But now we just took our rights from Zulon, put it to Amazon. Amazon is now printing my books, the, my first book that I've written in 2011. And now we got those books being printed and on its way. You can go to my website, order my books from my store, The Serpent to See the Second Coming. We have a four book offer, four books for $40. I'll even pay the shipping. You can order the, the four book uh, um, the four book offer on my website, or you can order them individually. Our Holy Land products. If you want to go to Israel with me in March of 2020, get a hold of me as soon as possible. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Pastor, if you want me to come to your church to talk about Israel, Bible prophecy, and current events, I would love to do so. We got some openings for late summer, early fall. Give me a call. Or send me a Facebook message. Send me an email. August.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com. If you feel led to help support our ministry because you enjoy the plain sense interpretation of Bible prophecy, then hit the PayPal button at the bottom of my webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Or you can link your checking account to our ministry's PayPal account, and you can support us at $20 a month, $25 a month. Some of you are doing that right now. Or you can mail your support. To Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 55 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865. Hope you have a great weekend, and I hope to see you, Lord willing, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless that changes, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another Bible Prophecy update. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, today's a day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Today could even be too late. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to wash your sins away by his precious blood. Ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life, your heart, to be your Lord and personal Savior. Ask him to change and transform your life. Ask him to make you a new creation, a new creature. In him. Ask to receive his free gift of eternal life. And if you mean business with him, he'll mean business with you. Jesus could be your savior today or he'll be your judge tomorrow. The choice is up to you. And if you want to know how to do that, give me a holler here. I would love to talk with you on how to get saved. So, guys, enjoy your weekend. Have a blessed Lord's Day come Sunday. And remember, keep looking up. Oh, by the way, I'll be preaching in New Hampshire at Calvary Baptist Church in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, all day. Brother Donald Gum is the pastor of that church. We'll be there all day. So if you live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, or any of the surrounding areas, I will be at Calvary Baptist Church. Come this Sunday preaching for them all day. So remember. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. That's Hebrew. Pray for the peace.
of Jerusalem. God bless, guys. Enjoy your beautiful, warm summer day today. Enjoy the weekend. We'll see you, Lord willing, come Wednesday. Bye-bye.